Good afternoon. Um, welcome. Um, it's my tremendous pleasure to introduce to you um, uh, actually the 2016 SAP Gold Quality Award winner, um, company Blackman, with its uh, CFO, uh, Gerwin Meulman. And the presentation of today is about the implementation of uh, the Simples Finance solution, um, which was part of a bigger project at, uh, at Blackman. And so it's my tremendous honor to give the word to uh, Gerwin, who will uh, dive to you in this journey, tell you a bit more about the project, about Blackman, of course, the company, because I don't uh, think many of you know the company. It's a very innovative com a company, and I think it's worthwhile diving into what they do day to day and how they use digital transformation, words that have been uh, thrown around today already quite some time, but how they use digital transformation really to do their business day to day and to grow. And so, Gerwin, the floor is yours. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Will. Good afternoon, uh, ladies and uh, gents. As you probably can hear, I'm a Dutch guy, and that's also part of the story of Blackman. Partly it's coming from the Netherlands, and partly it's Belgium. Um, what I will do during this presentation, I will tell you something about what is Blackman doing, what are we. We are, let's say, it, first of all, we are a logistics service provider. Uh, what was the goals of what were the goals of the project, which we called one team. One team that has a specific reason for it, because at the end, what we were looking for, we had two legal entities, two companies who were coming together, and we'll, where we think they should act as one team. Why we have chosen for SY people, uh, what were the project benefits, and some examples, what did us help in the whole transition. And at the end, I will. We'll end with some points where you can take uh, notice of and lessons learned. First of all, Blackman. Uh, Blackman. As you probably can read here, we are the European market leader in uh, global supply chain solutions. What will that mean? We are doing warehousing and transportation and forwarding for customers in the fashion and lifestyle industry. We are based in the Netherlands and Belgium. That's what I said before. We had two legal entities. We had Bellspeed in Belgium, and we had TNT Fashion in the Netherlands, which was part of TNT, but was sold in 2014 to the shareholders of Bellspeed. And then it came together. We are doing roughly 300 million units of, yeah, of garments through the whole Europe. And in 2014, 15, 16, we started also operations up in UK, US, in Asia. We have uh, 850 people. At this moment, we do 200 million euros of revenue. And if you look five, six years back, we're talking about roughly combined, it was 100 million. So in the last five, six years, we did a growth of more than 10, 15% revenue. And we have very big famous names like uh, Dior, Gucci. And we have network infrastructure, which is leading in our, in our industry because we think that IT, and it was also mentioned before, is very crucial for our future. In the past, you always had, we do transport and we do warehousing. It was it, but at this moment, all our customers are asking when it's every day, what's the track and trace, what the visibility, all those things. So we need to have a very state-of-the-art IT structure. And last of, but not least, we want not to be only best in class, but also first in class. Then a little bit about the timeline of Blackman. We can go very long back. In 1862, Blackman was started in Oldenzaal. That is nearby the German border, far away from here. Probably three hours drive. Therefore, I was a little bit late, but let's say that's where it all started. And in the last couple of years, it has come together. In Belgium, they started also at the border, but that at the border in Eupen in 1983, that, that was the start of Bellspeed. Uh, and, and, and if you look in the last five, six years, we opened warehouses in Ghent. We have opened a big uh, warehouse in bergen op zoom That's roughly 40,000 square meter. Uh, and in 2014, there it stated about 
the fact that there was acquisition of TNT fashion. TNT fashion was, was the Dutch part, and this is one of the main reasons why we have implemented SAP, is that we want to have one, one, one way of working, one, one system. If I look back, when we, when, we, when we came together in 2014, we needed to make figures. Uh, in Belgium, I was counted from EBITDA to EBIT, and in Netherlands, the other way around. So that was always a lot of uh, difficulties. Uh, later on, in 2014, we started up in the UK. We started Asian, and as from May 2016, we are also in the US, in Ohio. We are, at this moment, we have our warehouse with, at this moment, more than 100 people working. And the, the major step we are talking here about is in January 2016, we have implemented SAP. We decided, let's say, in uh, March 2015 that we would start with um, as well people, and in r roughly 43, 44 weeks, we have managed it in three countries, UK, Belgium, and Netherlands. Now, this is more a uh, geographic overview where you can see that our home base is still the, the Benelux. We have more than uh, roughly, I would say, 300,000 square meters of warehousing. And in those warehousing, we do pick and pack activities purely for the fashion industry. Customers like Abercrombie & Fitch, Microcores, uh, Superdry, that's what we do in Belgium and the Netherlands. And of course, we have now a smaller location in the UK because you see that customers of us, they want to be very close by. We, we have there a return center and an e-commerce center <coughs> because in the UK, it's a market which is very focused on, on e-commerce. And on Friday is a very, a very big day because all our warehouses are really busy. I believe in Bergen op Zoom we are talking about four or 500 people because it's Black Friday and then everybody wants to order. So it's really busy at that moment. Uh, we have 850 employees. <coughs> and what I told you before, in busy season, we have a lot of temps in our warehouses. Okay, uh, yeah, this is more, what, what are we doing? Now, of course, we are focused on fashion and the lifestyle industry, but what can we do as Blackman? We have inbound services that's from, let's say, Asia to Rotterdam or Antwerpen. Then we do the warehousing logistics uh, that's in between the four walls, as we always say. Then we do outbound services distribution. And where especially the growth is at this moment is in our B2C environment, where, we, where of course, it's much easier to put 20 pieces in a box than only one or two pieces in a, a, a smaller box for the B2C market. And what you still of what you see at this moment, there's a lot of attention to returns. In the B2C environment, you get certain customers have 20, 30% returns. Others have 10, but that process you need to handle very good because a customer is really focused on that everybody gets his money back, that the returns are handled in a proper way. And what we also say, say is that, oh, go one step back, uh, customs, is one of our cornerstones, which is really crucial for our customers because they are American-based, and those Americans, they don't understand how we are dealing here with duties, uh, VAT, and all those other legal requirements. So that are the four elements in our whole proposition. And what we say to the market, we need to deliver quality with a certain speed, but we need to be flexible. In the fashion industry, brands can go up, brands can go down. Like Michael Kors growing very quickly. Uh, we have, uh, let's say, some, some old school in the Netherlands like uh, McGregor uh, MS Mode. They went into bankruptcy. We need to be flexible and we need to adapt to that. And our solution at this moment is not only retail, not only wholesale, but also e-commerce. All those three channels we need to to handle. And as explained further, of er, er, earlier, we have done our international expansion. We're still not at the end, but we are in the UK, USA, and Asia. Now here's a list of uh, some of our customers. Yeah. 
uh, Bell Rose we're doing here in Belgium, Stella and Dot, purely e-commerce, but also the other brands like a McGregor. We're not doing this thing in the other presentation. Um, these are two uh, big, uh, big customers, Ab Ab Abercrombie and Fitch. Now, let's say we're talking about 45 million retail and two and a half million pieces D2C, which is only growing that last one because everybody is selling more and more and more on the internet. For Superdry, we have a location in uh, Grobendonk, nearby uh, Antwerpen, that's roughly uh, 45,000 square meters with only Superdry. So that's a little bit about what is Blackman doing. Blackman, but, and that's the next step. Blackman is, of course, if you're looking back, it were two separate legal entities with yeah, different dynamics. TNT fashion in the Netherlands, it was, you could say it's professional. You can also say it's very bureaucratic. In, in procedures like procurement, five, uh, five persons need, need to approve. Belgium, uh, previous Be bell speed, it was pretty, yeah, you could say entrepreneur, entrepreneurship, but you can always say it's less formal. And what we have tried to do with also with this project to harmonize the pro procedures, whether it's procurement, whether it's financially, whether it's accounting, we have tried to make it one team. That was also the reason why, I've called, why we have called it one team. <clears throat> of course, if you are in that process, with two locations, two way of working, you want to optimize and reduce your cost. And you want to have the reporting on the same level so that you can see on that customer we are making profit, on that customer we are not making the profit. So we need to talk to the customer. And it can be that the customer is doing certain things which cost us a lot of time and a lot of money. So that's something we, we focused on. We want to have more transparency, that our managers who are on site know exactly what they are doing. What customer is making money, what customer is not making money. And of course, last but not least, all the inefficiency in the process you want to get out. Yeah, like in the Netherlands, five people need to approve on a certain uh, yeah, invoice of 10,000 euros. I think that's kind of thing you should stop with. So higher product productivity, um, also less systems, and one uniform way of reporting. We have installed in, let's say, in the Netherlands and Belgium overall one central location where we do the whole procurement. Uh, so they fill in the catalog and all that kind of things so that there's no separation, but everybody can use it. Strong administration, and of course, what we have done we have implemented this, first of all, for uh, the Netherlands, Belgium, and UK. But later on, in 2016, we did do the same for USA. And then we have the same way of reporting with the four segments, customs, warehousing, transport, and, for and forwarding activities. So we can just roll it all up. And we have analytics tool that we can see what is going well and what is not going well. Why did we uh, select Ezwa? Uh, let's say, because I, uh, to be very open and honest, before uh, 2014, I did not know them. Uh, I'm from the Dutch side, so uh, hey, uh, I did not know Ezwa people. They are in the Netherlands, but at the end, uh, we, we did do a tender, and they came with some good ideas. They were very yeah, innovative, and what was very good from us, with them together, we talked about the business first. And from the business, we look further into what needs to be developed. And one thing we said up front, we need to have a very standard way of working. And what you can see at the end, in the first three months, we were very busy. But at that moment, it was crystal clear what we needed. And there were, of course, you have some small tweaking at the end. But there was not a lot of additional things which need to be programmed. So the things we all thought about in the first three months, and that costed time because everybody is first, hey, we need to implement, implement, implement. No, first go with your team, go with your partner on the table and look what you really need. And of course, the period where we decided uh, was in April. And the problem was because TNT Fashion was on an old SAP system, 
they needed to get rid of that system as of the 1st of January 2016. So yeah, we need to do some, uh, some hard work, but we all, overall we have managed it. The, uh, the lucky we had with SOR people that they were in the Netherlands and Belgium, so we have specific uh, country knowledge, and it was very transparent from a cost and a progress perspective. Overall, at the end, we had a 7 8% overspend, but that's something we talk about later. Um, it was very fast. Uh, what did we do? What we have implemented? As said before, we have the central uh, uh, HANA platform where yeah, we have really on time and easy, let's say, I can drill down on certain activities, whether they are making money, that customer, or whether they are not making money. And it's just with, we have analytics tool on top of it, so we can get the data on it. So in management team meetings, we can go straight away into our SAP system if there is a really detailed question and to get it out of the system. The back office we have centralized and it's more productive so that we work now with them. Three-way matching for, of the invoices, a PO in the system, goods received in the system, and then automatically the invoice go through. It's very professional uh, due to the fact that we have a lot of standardization in this whole implementation. It's a very standardized process where we can do the administration and the accounting from Belgium for the, in the, for the US, for the UK. So it's very good for us to manage. And at the end, we have, of course, efficiency gains because we can do more volume with the same amount of people. Some examples, um, to go a little bit more in, in the detail, uh, I said this is one of the things where, where we as a company, they have a lot of uh, advantages. The fact that we have implemented the vendor invoice management tool, that invoices uh, in the past, we, let's say in, in Belgium was pretty old school, uh, where the invoices all need to be signed. In the Netherlands it was a little bit more automated but at a certain moment we have implemented that whole vendor in invoice management procedure <coughs> where we really can see that invoice needs to be approved by that person and not five times, no, one or two times when it's really needed and then it goes to the next round. And this is where I'm very happy with. This is the, the flexible reporting tool where you really can see in the various components here, this is Blackman, this is the customs, this is uh, the warehouse employees, this is the general ops cost, the, o the overhead cost, where you can really drill down on cost, but also on customer level, so that you can see, hey, that customer in that segment is making that kind of money. And then you can overall also make a decision on a customer, because if I know that I make money on warehousing, and transportation, it's costing money, but overall we are still making money for that customer and we can decide to keep the customer despite the fact that on transport we are having less, less profitability. Now, what I what said before, you can very simple drill down from financial statements to GL balances, GL line items, and that's the first time I worked with SAP this is very practical and very efficient way of working. What I would like to, uh, yeah, to mention you at the end, which is re very re relevant, is the first comment. You need to focus on the business. The business is relevant for, for the whole implementation. Because first you have the business, then of course you have your systems, and then of course you have your people. I saw it in the presentation before here also. But that if you are not focusing on the business and you implement only the system, don't do it. We have a part of uh, found who, yeah, who was the same way, looking to us, to the system, to the way of working. And I said, based on that, we developed ownership on the whole processes, whether it was uh, the people from uh, operations, they understand it. And of course, we have. What we did do, we started in November with Blackman UK uh, in SAP, 
So we already had a very small legal entity where we already can start it with to look whether it, this will work also for the bigger companies in Belgium and the Netherlands. Uh, it's very relevant that you don't forget training and testing, but it's more essential that you have a change control process to avoid that you have additional cost at the end of the route, which you would like to avoid. Uh, communication and change management, that was, uh, yeah, because we had two separate companies who are coming together, that, cost, that did cost a lot of time. But at the end, you need to have everybody in the same way. And of course, that could take that the people from the Netherlands go to Belgium and from Belgium into the Netherlands. So, but th it was good because then at the end, everybody was focused on the same way of working. Because at the end, we are a company who have a strategy that we want to grow. And we want to grow, first of all, in the bandwidth, but then overall. And of course, it's very relevant that the people, eh, we have a lot of people working in our company, know exactly where you want to go. And that did cost time, but at the end, it was very, very good. Of course, you need to look at your master data. Uh, the conversion of the chart of accounts is very relevant. <coughs> and business intelligence, because at the end, you want to drill down into the data. We have, uh, we have spent some time on that one. Uh, here again, yeah, it's especially roles and responsibilities can change. Let's say in Belgium, let's, they thought that a lot of the things they could do themselves, they could decide, approve, in the Netherlands, they always, there was a lack of responsibility because if five people are authorizing, then of course, you no, know, it was him, it was him. And at the end, we said, hey, we need to have good people who take responsibility. And of course, they need to work together in a team. Um, the HR part, which I just discussed, the financials were discussed every two to four weeks, so that at the end we had 7 8% overspend, and we were on time with the whole project. And last but not least, we had, uh, during the process, uh, you have sometimes it's conflicting, it's not going well, uh, that's in every project, but at the end we had also some fun. We went with the whole team when we needed to sit together, whether it was in Gent, whether it was in Enschede, it was very good fun. In Gent, they had that famous Geneva Cafe. We went also there. So we had also fun during this whole road route and that we have implemented a system where at the end, we as a company can work further and whether it's in the Benelux or all, all around the world is possible. Thank you. Any questions? Do we have some time for questions, I think? Sure. Yeah. Sure. It's a quick one. Since you're, you're, you're the no, we had a, we had a clean installation. <laughs> and that was, uh, I said, uh, the old SAP system, which we had uh, for TNT fashion in the Netherlands, was, uh, was owned by TNT. And we, we stopped with that one. Uh, and we have all the, the data was implemented in the new SAP in this system. Yes. Uh, I've, and the, the other one was much more focused on, on TNT's way of business and not our way of business. TNT is an express company, mainly focused in uh, transportation of uh, only parcels. And what we're now doing, we are doing full supply chain and we have there the four segments where you can see that all those four segments you need to analyze from a different way of working. And what we have said, okay, we want to have the business leading. And that's now very good because with this system we can analyze our business and the previous system and the old TNT system was more an accounting system, purely accounting. Eh? Of course, your, G, your GL is not the problem, but you cannot analyze your business with that system. That's one of the main reasons why we have said from, hey, we need, to, we need to start with the business, and from that way, we need to go further. I think another uh, important... 
they don't want me to say anything. Okay. Uh, I think another important difference, uh, Jan, is uh, the fact uh, of how we implemented the solution. Because uh, basically, SAP is a, the same standard, uh, stable solution as ever before. But I remember the first time I uh, met uh, Gerwin, he was quite skeptical, skeptical about SAP. Um, and, and the first thing he told me uh, or said uh, was, yeah, if you want to change something, for example, the name of the company, yeah. because at that time the name changed of the legal uh, company, uh, they had to pay a an, an tremendous amount of money and it took uh, a lot of time because they, they needed to... Uh, and whereas now, the solution, uh, I would say, remains the same, uh, except for the, the fact that it's uh, based on a HANA foundation. Now, because of the methodology that we used, the training that we provided to uh, the Blackman team, they're self-sufficient so in a lot of things. So that's all also a big difference in, let's say, the SAP that was running at TNT and the SAP that is running now at, uh, at Blackman. I believe it was even costing 10,000 euros and it costed me three months to have only the name change from TNT version into Blackman. So you could imagine we were all laughing uh, <laughs> during that session. <laughs> oh. It was the first time uh, we, we, we met. Other questions? We had, uh, no, we had, a, we had an open, open calculation where, uh, I, where I said from every two, four weeks, we get an update from, hey, this, for this, for the planning, we had this amount. For uh, the next step, we had that amount. And of course, let's say, in the beginning, we did spend some more money, um, but at the end, it did save some money because it was very clearly documented what we needed. And of course, our first aim was, hey, we need to have a standard way of working around the countries, and that's something which costed us internally a lot of time to get that into process, but let's say the system was pretty standard, and if you leave it standard, then there is not much difference. But the only thing what I was very, yeah, uh, strange, because I thought we have, uh, in the Netherlands and Belgium, we have all the same VAT rules, but that's not the case, I learned <laughs> during the process. That was the only thing where I thought, hey, this is something where, I didn't know that uh, because yeah, you have, Euro you, you have European VAT rules. So I said, from, okay, we know it in the Netherlands, so do the same in Belgium. Uh -uh, wrong. Yeah, that was the only thing where we had some smaller hiccups. Yeah, indeed. So the, it was a time and material uh, project. Um, and uh, basically, uh, yeah, ACP awarded uh, Blackman and SOE people with a quality award for fast delivery. So we we delivered the solution in, uh, in, in about nine months, uh, the total solution, uh, live in the three countries, so Belgium, Netherlands, and, uh, and UK. And I think part of the, uh, the success is not only the experience at our site, SOE people, but was also the experience at the site of Blackman. Um, we've told them, and, and they listened, uh, luckily, um, that it was worthwhile investing in uh, some people with experience at their site. And so they invested in um, an external project manager to help them during the project. And I think this was also a big advantage uh, they had uh, during, uh, during the project. So it was uh, someone from uh, Tree Finance who had uh, already different uh, SAP and non-SAP ERP implementations uh, on his track record. And this helped a lot to give Blackman the necessary um, yeah, uh, comfort in doing this project in time and material. Yeah, to, be, to add on that point, from first of all, you think you can do it uh, without a consultant project manager. Uh, we can do it ourselves. Accounting manager there can do a little bit more. He can do a little bit, forget it. Don't do it, just spend some money on that one and it will help you at the end, really. Because those guys who are working for your company can do what they normally do. And of course, they need to implement the project, but to guide it and to do the right steps, if it's costing, let's say, 100,000 euros to have a project manager, do it, really. And normally, uh, Dutch guys are, uh, are very uh, keen on money, so... Uh, <laughs> 
The negotiations were tough, that's true. <laughs> yeah, that's not a topic. <laughs> okay. Did you adapt your business processes to SAP, or did you wait through a lot of uh, structural changes in SAP? No, it was, uh, like I said, uh, we, we have looked into the, uh, to our own uh, way of working, and we have said from, hey, we want that, how can we do that in this system? And of course, then you have certain smaller tweaks in your processes, like uh, the way we're dealing with invoices, eh? but it is more to generate more efficiency and to have more, uh, yeah, less bureaucratic and sometimes at least some approval trees in the system. So it was not only, no, it was not one way or the other, but of course you look into the system and we said, first of all, we want to have a standard because I cannot imagine that SAP develops a system which is not efficient or is not working. So, and from that point of view, of course, you have two ways. Eh? You have the way they, they do accounting in Belgium and the way they, they do accounting in the Netherlands. You need to adapt those processes. And I believe that was much more of, of something which was in our uh, team the case that we need those two streams to get aligned because everybody's thinking it better. Eh? In Belgium or Netherlands, it doesn't matter. So I think that's the, the big uh, challenge that Blackman had, was not so much uh, implementing an ERP uh, solution, but it was more uh, aligning uh, a small, if I may say so, company like Bellspeed in Belgium that only did 25 million euros at that uh, point in time, and a company in uh, the Netherlands, TNT Fashion, that did 100 uh, million euros, that uh, was more bureaucratic, and so on and so on. And the challenge was, the challenge was to really align and use the project to um, yeah, go to one company and allow uh, after that uh, further uh, extensions and or acquisitions that uh, Blackman is looking for. And so this allowed uh, Blackman in the meantime to develop their uh, business in the United States because at the time that we were discussing uh, the potential ERP project, uh, they were already thinking about the United States, but there was not yet uh, feed on the ground. So, and the fact that they used SAP as an accelerator to make one unified platform their foundation, if I may say so, really helped them accelerate in, in foreign countries. And yeah, uh, not only two weeks ago, uh, Johan Milia, who is the CEO uh, of Blackman, and will speak later on in the panel uh, discussion, uh, really interesting, uh, was telling about the same action but in, in, in Asia. So we went to Singapore, thinking already about how we could um, develop uh, Blackman in that area. And the fact that uh, they now have one strong foundation to do so, it will really certainly be an accelerator to, uh, to develop this, uh, this quickly. And for the record, the implementation of uh, the SAP solution, except for the interfaces that were, uh, of course, uh, developed, uh, the solution is 100% standard. So also there, uh, this was really one of the, the key dif differentiators for Blackman to choose uh, SAP and not go for the two other competitors that were uh, bidding on, uh, on this case. Questions? Stage management was, first of all, we have a project manager who did, of course, work in the Netherlands and Belgium, uh, but the fact that he was more in Belgium based, also referring to what Gaetan just said, hey, we needed to make some changes in Belgium and into the Netherlands. So I said, it cost me a lot of time also to, to go over to, to Belgium because we are in Krasnodar there, uh, but also to get the team aligned there. Eh? That was the, the, the most important thing eh, in the whole business. Because, of course, it's very good that you have analytics tool, but the way of working and the change management that everybody is working the same way, that costed a lot of time. And that's, yeah, from me and also the project manager, we need to look every week, hey, how is it going? Is everybody on the right track? So that, that cost a lot of time. Of course, the training, of course, we had the trainings in October, November, so, uh, but that was, yeah, more the standard way of working. Uh, but especially the change management that was communicating, everybody come together. Eh? Bergen op Som is a little bit in between. So we came there a lot of times together to communicate about, 
Uh, where are we? These are the things we are going to change. Is everybody feeling comfortable? Do you think there are issues with it? To get at least the people connected with everybody, with the new way of working. And that, yeah, that, that did cost time, not to, not to underestimate. But sometimes that was also the role of the project manager who then has an individual, individual objective role who's not saying, hey, the Dutch guys are good or the Belgian guys are good. We see, we see that, let's say, uh, of course, you, UK, we started up and it was very small. Eh? It was before we went live with the other two. Uh, but the US, we have uh, implemented, uh, let's say, in July of this year. Uh, and what you see there, we, have, we are very straight on it that it's the same way. The, what we have done, our the accounting manager from the Netherlands, he also went over to, to the US. And he's there also responsible. So at the end, it's the same way of working in the Netherlands and in the US. But of course, when it's growing, eh, then in the US, eh, it's now one location with, I believe, of, uh, uh, only 100 people at this moment. But when it's going further, further, of course, it will have some specific needs. And if we appoint over there an accounting manager, we, we need to control that he is not going his own way to avoid that we hey, we cannot compare the figures anymore. Because that's one thing which is very helpful, that we can make the comparison the same way of working. But of course, we have now centralized UK accounting we do in the Netherlands, and partly in Belgium, uh, and the US accounting is done by the accounting manager who from the Netherlands flies every six weeks over there for one, or for one week, let's say it that way. But I totally agree with your comment, because the more you're growing, because we are, we are at this moment a very growing company. Eh? If you go from 100 million to 200 million in six years time, and of course the goal is to continue that grow in the upcoming four or five years though, so that you will end up with 300 million in various countries. Then we should very strict on making changes. At this mo, yeah, <coughs> at this moment we are uh, we are now used to the system. Let's say that way. Yeah? We are now uh, ten months live, and the data is very good in the system. Uh, we can approve invoices on your uh, on your iPhone. That's all very well. But at this moment, it's a little bit stabilizing. US, we are implementing, and then of course, yeah, there will be some new future features which we also are looking into, but that's not at this moment uh, the stage. I think the, the, the major gain at this point in time, uh, Eric, for uh, Blackman using HANA is uh, the thing which uh, Gerwin is most keen on, <laughs> which is the Excel that you uh, saw in his presentation, and which is really a, a real-time live view on the numbers. Uh, and, and I think, uh, and, 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 and Johan will definitely agree, uh, from the moment something changes into the SAP system, his dashboard or his Excel changes, mm -hmm. and, and, and this is really, um, yeah, it was a pain uh, before, and I think now, uh, whenever they have a board meeting, uh, yeah, that, that they have the advantage of uh, using that uh, technology. Of course, uh, then you have more the technical side, of course, from, uh, from using HANA and, and, and the performance. I think that's actually uh, more of a second uh, benefit than, than, than the analytical part. That was really something 
to be open and honest, uh, that was something the IT guys looked at. Hey. <laughs> so uh, well, probably you were more yeah, in the process. I can, yeah, I can. <laughs> uh, at, the, at the moment, so you have to make a distinction about public and private cloud, of course. At the moment in time that Blackman uh, made their choice, the, pu the public solution, uh, public cloud solution was not yet available. However, uh, at uh, the time of decision, um, Blackman uh, rightfully uh, made uh, the analysis of checking whether a private cloud solution with the HANA solution, of course, uh, could be feasible, yes or no. Um, unfortunately for me, for us, at the time, it was a bit the beginning of the private cloud uh, setup of, of HANA. Uh, it, is, it was quite expensive. So the business case uh, that we've made together was actually quite easy and therefore uh, Blackman chose the on-premise solution. If you would ask me now and if we would make uh, the TCO analysis today, then it's a complete other uh, story. Uh, in one of the other sessions, we're talking about our hosting uh, offer. Uh, the platform uh, that we use is T-Systems, really interesting. And now we can offer very, very competitive uh, pricing, uh, not just for the private cloud, uh, let's say the storage of the solution, but all the services that, uh, that go around from monitoring and so on and so on. So unfortunately, I would say due in time, due to costing, it was not an option. Um, but from a strategy point of view, I would say, and I think that uh, uh, they would definitely have gone for the private cloud solution would the pricing uh, have been right at the time. At that moment, I believe we were first in class and best in class, but... Yeah, indeed, <laughs> indeed, indeed, that's true, that's true. But we have, uh, in the meantime, uh, other customers which are making the step, uh, and so we, we really feel that it's uh, quite a good momentum to, to go for S4HANA uh, in the cloud. And the public cloud uh, solution is, I think, uh, not so long uh, available yet on the market, so... Um, Other questions? No? Okay. Thank and you. Th I would like to thank you. <laughs> yeah. uh, and I hope next time you buy uh, some clothing online, whether it's a neighbor Crombie uh, t shirt <laughs> or a super dry uh, hoodie, you think of Blackman. Uh, and you think about the logistics that they take care of and that they make sure that your t-shirt is in time and on the right place at the right time. Thank, Thank you, you. Gaetan. <laughs>